Hi, in this video we are going to study vertical jaw relation. Now jaw relation is a maxillomandibular relation. You have to establish that in the patient's mouth after uh, he or she has lost teeth or due to any other reason for any dental treatment. So now to understand vertical jaw relation in complete denture patients, let's do this small exercise. Okay, try to close your mouth. So when you close your mouth, you have a, your teeth which are going to help you stop at a specific place. So this is your vertical dimension at occlusion because that is the dimension at which your teeth are occluding with themselves. Okay, so that is your vertical dimension, the separation of the jaw when you are occluding, that is vertical dimension at occlusion. Now try to just forget about everything and sit at ease. Are your teeth touching? No, they don't touch at rest. So there is some amount of gap that is maintained between your teeth in a natural physiologic form when you are at rest. So let's be at rest for some time and see whether our teeth are touching or not. No, they are not touching. That means we have to maintain that kind of a space in the patient's mouth who's coming for complete denture treatment to you. So now we have our teeth to help us guide how much to close, how much not to close, how much to be at ease, how much space to keep. But in a patient who has lost all their teeth, in a complete denture patient, in a completely edentulous patient, you only have the maxillary ridge and the mandibular ridge. There are no teeth present. So how much will the patient close? Have you not seen these uh, people who have lost their teeth have this kind of an appearance whether you know jaw is just coming, lower jaw tries to come and close with the upper jaw. These patients will try to close on the tongue. They will try to bite on the tongue. So there are all these factors that you have to consider before you set the vertical jaw relation. Now what happens if you don't set the vertical jaw relation? You will not know how much gap to keep between the two arches. You may tend to keep it too much giving a very long appearance. So the patient will look like this. If you give too much distance between two, uh, two arches and if you don't give enough distance then the patient will have that kind of an appearance. So the rehabilitation that you are going to do is dependent on the vertical jaw relation. Okay. So technically what is vertical jaw relation? It is defined as the length of the face as determined by the amount of separation of the jaws. So the amount of separation of the jaws is going to determine the length of your face. If the jaws are too far apart, then the face will look longer. If the jaws are too close to each other, then the face will look shrunken. So the middle third of the face is going to look like it has collapsed. So that is the importance of vertical jaw relation. It is maintained either by the occlusion of teeth or by balanced tonic contraction of the opening and closing muscles of mandibular movements. So, so there are these factors which are going to affect the vertical jaw relation. First that I told you is your teeth. Your teeth are helping you to close in that specified uh, length in the specified vertical relation. But if teeth are not there, your muscles are going to guide you to close in that specified direction. So vertical jaw relation is a collaboration of your teeth and muscle activity. Factors affecting vertical dimension, teeth. Your teeth are acting as a vertical stop. It is allowing you to stop where required. It is allowing you to stop at rest. You know how much you have to close. Okay. So for a patient without teeth, they do not have vertical stop. It is lost in a completely edentulous patient. And the musculature. So opening and closing muscles tend to be in a state of minimal tonic contraction. So when you are at rest, completely at rest, your muscles are also in equilibrium. If your muscles are trying to push the mandible, to close or to open, then it is going to change the vertical dimension. So your muscles are very important in your vertical jaw relation record. Two measurable lengths of the face are important guides in making jaw relation records. These are vertical dimension at rest or physiologic rest position and vertical dimension at occlusion. So there are two parameters that you have to understand. One is at occlusion. Now occlusion for a completely edentulous patient, there is no occlusion. You have to provide the occlusion. So how are you going to provide the occlusion? For that you are going to take help from the vertical dimension at rest. So vertical dimension at rest or physiologic rest position. When you are at rest, your teeth are not touching. So that position is independent of tooth. That position is independent of the occlusion. So you are going to take help from the vertical dimension at rest and you are going to decide the vertical dimension at occlusion so that you can rehabilitate a patient with a complete denture. So we will have a brief look at these terminologies and what they are defined as vertical dimension at rest or the short form, the accepted short form is VDR, vertical dimension at rest. It is defined as the position of the mandible in relation to the maxilla when the maxillofacial musculature are in state of equilibrium. 
so when there is no movement of the musculature when they are in tonic equilibrium when the muscle tone is completely nullified balanced at that time the relationship of the mandible to the maxilla is known as vertical dimension at rest at rest absolutely at rest okay it is the length of the face when the mandible is in rest position that means when the mandible is resting when there is no movement of muscle on it that at that point the length of the face is known as vertical dimension at rest and what is physiologic rest position the position assumed by the mandible when the head is in an upright position the muscles are in equilibrium in tonic contraction and the condyles are in neutral unstrained position is the physiologic rest position physiologic and then rest position so at this in this position the head is in an upright position first parameter second is the muscles are in equilibrium and the third parameter is the condyles are in neutral unstrained position so all these three factors are going to be termed as physiologic rest position so you have understood the difference between vertical dimension at rest and physiologic rest position now what is vertical dimension at occlusion so the name is very self explanatory vertical separation of the jaws when the teeth or occlusal rims are in occlusion so teeth for a dentate patient and occlusal rims for an edentate patient so what is the purpose of occlusal rims it is for jaw relation record you are first going to orient the maxillary rim and that is called orientation jaw relation then you are going to transfer it to the articulator using a face bow if you are do using a semi adjustable articulator then you will transfer it with a face bow and then you are going to determine the vertical jaw relation the vertical jaw relation with the help of occlusal rims so like how much is the height of the teeth currently in your mouth that much you are going to rehabilitate in the patients with jaw as with the occlusal rim as a template okay so your occlusal rims are helping you to guide to understand how much vertical dimension you have to maintain in a normal dentulous patient the teeth do not maintain contact at rest like i told you at rest there is no contact between the teeth the space between the teeth at rest is called freeway space so the space that is maintained between your teeth at rest is called freeway space or interocclusal distance iod correct now vertical dimension at rest at rest we have the additional distance between the teeth so what is that distance it is vertical dimension at occlusion plus the freeway space or the interocclusal distance what does this mean let's be at rest so we are at rest currently we have our teeth and we have an additional distance between them so when you close your teeth the distance is disappearing correct so vertical dimension at occlusion when you are occluding the distance is disappearing from the vertical dimension at rest correct so that is vertical dimension at rest minus the freeway space is going to give you the vertical dimension at occlusion now what is the whole funda of knowing all this mathematical formula so we do not know the vertical dimension at occlusion we have to determine this how will you determine this we know the vertical dimension at rest because it is constant for the patient because the musculature is going to guide the patient in that position it is a tooth independent position so vertical dimension at rest once you know you are going to subtract 2 mm of freeway space or 4 mm of freeway space and you will get vertical dimension at occlusion so that is why it is important to understand this thoroughly what are the methods of determining vertical dimension at rest at rest what are the methods to determine the vertical dimension so first is facial measurements after swallowing and relaxing do this swallow so once you swallow your teeth are not in contact okay so you are at rest or while you are relaxing so you will measure the vertical dimension now how will you measure this vertical dimension choose any two landmarks on your face any two stable landmarks on your face and just measure it with the help of a scale or calipers or a divider okay so preferably the tip of the nose and the highest point on the chin are preferred you can use the head and the chin also but then when you have to make a measurement there are other things which come in between so because these two are the most prominent points they are easier to record so tip of the nose and chin so if the patient has a beard then you can put a sticker on that and you can use the marking then speech now for example what kind of speech say arm when you say arm the m word is going to allow that kind of space to be gradually there okay the word the words ending with m will create freeway space naturally so words ending with m are going to help you come to vertical dimension at 
rest. Tactile sensation. That means it is a proprioceptive mechanism where you are trying to ask the patient to relax. So he will relax at that position only. The tactile sensation, the sensation proprioception is going to help you to record the vertical dimension at rest. Measurement of anatomical landmarks. There are a few landmarks within the mouth which are stable. So using those landmarks, you can do your vertical dimension at rest assessment. And facial expressions. Very long, taut face. That means the vertical dimension at rest is more. Very sunken face with a lower third collapsed. That means again the vertical dimension is less. So facial expressions is also going to give you an assessment of the vertical dimension at rest. So let us discuss this methods of recording vertical dimension at rest one by one starting with facial measurements after swallowing and relaxing. So like I told you, you are going to take two stable points on the patient's face, tip of the nose and you can take the chin and they have to be points. Okay, they cannot be huge circles. You have to be very precise when you are making these records because you are talking about millimeters. So they have to be very precise. Patient is asked to sit upright, comfortably eyes looking straight ahead and insert the maxillary occlusal rim and two reference points are marked preferably at the tip of the nose and tip of the chin instruct the patient to wipe his lips with his tongue to swallow and to drop his shoulders at rest position so when the patient swallows at rest position in an upright there is no force of gravity also acting on the lower jaw so there is absolutely equilibrium of musculature and forces on the patient so the patient is asked to lick the lip and swallow and relax and then you are going to take the measurement so that is your vertical dimension at rest you can use calipers or you can use dividers or you can use scale so you are going to record that measurement and then you are going to subtract two three millimeters out of that then check aesthetics and phonetics and then determine your vertical dimension at occlusion the second method is tactile sense or the proprioceptive mechanism you instruct the patient to stand erect and open the jaw wide until strain is felt in the muscle so once the patient is asked to open the jaw wide then they will feel some strain and they will just want to close at one position which is the reflex of the body they will close only at that proprioceptive place okay so when the opening becomes uncomfortable then ask the patient to close slowly till the jaws will reach a comfortable position and then measure the distance and compare so that is your tactile sensation okay next is speech so you ask the patient to repeatedly pronounce the letter m a certain number of times like am ram Okay, so with every time the letter ending with words ending with the letter M, the patient will come to the natural vertical dimension at rest. The distance is measured immediately after the patient stops because the patient does not have teeth. Once he says arm, he is trying to try to close it. Okay, so you have to be very quick and prompt while recording these measurements. The second method is keep talking to the patient and measure the distance immediately after the patient stops talking. So when you are talking continuously and then you stop, you will always tend to stop in physiologic rest position or vertical dimension at rest. So while the patient is talking, you will keep an eye on the patient and then once the patient stops, you are going to make the measurement. So that is by speech. Then the next method of assessment of the vertical dimension at rest is using the anatomical landmarks or the reference points. So how do you go about it? You measure the distance between the pupil of the eye and the rima oris. So this is the pupil of the eye and corner of the mouth and from the anterior nasal spine to the chin. So lower border of the mandible. This is known as Willy's guide. This is not a very stable kind of a method of understanding vertical dimension at rest, but you can also verify with two, three techniques. So this technique is called Willy's guide. If both the distances are equal, jaws are considered to be at rest. Obviously there are supposed to be a few anatomical things here and there, which are going to modify this parameter. So this is a theoretically important concept that you should remember. And then facial expressions and their role in determining the vertical jaw relation at rest. So patient's jaw will be in rest position when the patient is relaxed. The skin around the eyes and chin should be relaxed. Nostrils are relaxed and breathing should be unobstructed. And upper and lower lips have slight contact in one plane. So these are the features of facial expression that will help you in determining the vertical dimension at rest. So how do you know whether the vertical dimension that you've taken is actually correct or not or if a patient who is wearing a complete denture has adequate vertical dimension or not whether it is low whether it is more high it could be anything so how do you assess so what are the symptoms or signs and what are the features of increased vertical dimension and decreased vertical dimension so for increased vertical dimension you will see that there is decreased freeway space okay the dentures will click against each other there will be no freeway space 
pain and clicking in the TMJ, diffuse pain on the ridge, reversible soft tissue change or irreversible ridge resorption, increased lower facial height, increased uh, cheek biting complaint of the patient and stretching of the facial muscle. So these are associated with increased vertical dimension. What are the signs of decreased vertical dimension? So increased freeway space, sagging of the corners of the mouth, sagging meaning drooping of the corners of the mouth, thickening of lips, obstruction of the eustachian tube, muscular imbalance, facial height decreases and angular colitis. Because of the drooping, there is fungal infection at the corner of the mouth leading to angular colitis. So these are the factors which are associated with increased and decreased vertical height. So what kind of questions can you expect from this topic? Now this is a very conceptual based topic again and you should remember the differences between vertical dimension at rest and vertical dimension at occlusion. And the methods of recording both of them are different. We have discussed the methods of recording vertical dimension at occlusion in a separate video. So please check that out. Billy's guide, yes, for a theoretical point of view, the distance A and B that we discussed from the pupil of the eye to the rima oris should be equal to the anterior nasal spine to the, uh, to the mandible, lower border of the mandible. So that is a theoretically important uh, question. And the effects of increased and decreased freeway space, increased and decreased vertical dimension as well. So these are a few important things that you should prepare for your exam. I hope this video was fun and useful to you. Thank you for watching this video.